Well, the new Tucker Carlson reaction video just dropped, and we're going to see him react to the verdict of Derek Chauvin. Now, he brought on a former police officer, and uh, this police officer proceeded to explain what I think is pretty obvious, that Derek Chauvin very obviously and clearly used excessive force. And since he wasn't telling Tucker Carlson what he wanted to hear, Tucker then proceeded to throw a tizzy fit, the likes of which we haven't seen, I think, ever from him. And this got extremely awkward and a little bit creepy, to be honest. Take a look. The scene. I, I just think that it was excessive yeah, and well, it shouldn't happen. And what I'd like the, to say, the guy who did it looks like he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. So I'm kind of more worried about the rest of the country, which, thanks to police inaction, in case you haven't noticed, is like boarded up. <laughs> so that's more my concern. Well, but I appreciate let, let, you coming let, on. Ed Gavin, thank let, you. Let, let, nope, done. Thank you. That was really weird. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. And he started just like rambling incoherently towards the end there. Police in action, uh, like all this weird thing. What's wrong with you? Like you can tell Tucker Carlson is genuinely becoming unhinged. And he didn't like that his guest wouldn't just validate his existing biases. You see, when you go on Tucker Carlson's program, there's this implicit agreement that you are not going to say something that Tucker Carlson doesn't want you to say. Otherwise, he might be an asshole to you, or more importantly, you might not get that invitation back, and you really want to make sure that you maintain a friendly relationship with Tucker Carlson once you begin to uh, build up rapport, because uh, he has the most popular news show in America. So uh, that former police officer broke the cardinal rule of not telling uh, Tucker Carlson exactly what he wanted to hear. And since he didn't tell Tucker Carlson what he wanted to hear, Tucker Carlson then proceeded to censor him, literally kick him off his show. Wait, I thought that you were the guy who was pro free speech against censorship. And yet you censor your own guest like an authoritarian little prick. Interesting. Furthermore, by Tucker Carlson's standards of what censorship is, I think I'm actually literally being censored because I haven't been invited to go on Tucker Carlson's program yet. Um, now, Tucker adds uh, that it looks like Derek Chauvin's going to spend the rest of his life in prison, and he says this as if we should feel sympathy towards Derek Chauvin, but zero sympathy towards George Floyd. I mean, if given the choice between death and living albeit in prison don't you think that most people would opt to live but in prison what about the sympathy for george floyd derek chauvin took his life so he might spend the rest of his life behind bars he might not but regardless the outcome of dying getting murdered is worse than spending your life in prison so forgive me for not feeling sympathy for a cop that chose to kneel on a man's neck for almost nine minutes Tucker Carlson is a sick, sick fuck. And that weird laugh that he did, that wasn't the first time because when he was responding to Ted Lieu, who criticized him for his racist uh, great replacement conspiracy theory, uh, he did that same bizarre fake laugh again. Dear Scott Perry, native born Americans like you are no more American and no less American than an immigrant like me. Good point. We agree with that. And then he said this. And with every passing year, there will be more people who look like me in the United States. You can't stop it. So take your racist replacement theory and shove it. In other words, you're being replaced and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. <laughs> the man is becoming unraveled and more unhinged by the day. It's a... Uh... <laughs> It's entertaining at a minimum, I'll say that. But, you know, uh, in that same episode, the original episode where he was reacting to the Derek Chauvin verdict, he did bring on a guest who absolutely validated every single thing that he wanted to hear. Candace Owens. And usually I'd say, you know, Fox News tries to seek out gay and black people who will come on as guests and attack their own communities. But for Tucker Carlson, he doesn't even really worry about that. Like, he just says what usually they don't want to say because they don't want to appear racist. You know, usually they'll have a black person make a racist point for them so that way they have plausible deniability when they're accused of racism. Uh, but Tucker Carlson doesn't really worry about that. Nonetheless, he brought on Candace Owens to bolster his point 
about how this verdict is just absolutely unjust and egregious, which, I mean, maybe they've seen a different video than the one that we saw. Uh, nonetheless, Candace Owens is then going to proceed to make a lot of very, very silly arguments that will definitely make you lose IQ points. So turn away now if you don't want that to happen. Here you have to consider a murder case through the lens of politics. When you get to that point, haven't you already given up civilization? Well, that's correct. And what we're really seeing is mob justice. And, and that's really what happened with this entire trial. This was not a trial about George Floyd or Derek Chauvin. This was a trial about whether right. the media uh, was powerful enough to create a simulation and decide upon a narrative absent any facts, whether it was powerful enough to repeat showing and talking about a nine minute clip that came from somebody's cell phone without adding any context, without showing the full, you know, the full police video, which they could have released. They refused to release the full body cam, which would have added more clarity um, to the fact that the media was lying. You know, the media came out. Let's not forget this, Tucker. The media came out and told us that this was a man who was just getting his life together. He was a good, you know, good member of society. And he got mixed up because a racist white police officer had it out for him and, and killed him. All of that fell apart. All the facts came out and all of that fell apart. We now know, of course, that he had enough fentanyl in him. It was three times the lethal dosage, three times lethal dosage in him when he died. But nobody cares because the media was successful in putting out a narrative and they kept hitting that narrative. And the reason why the Democrats are happy is because they realize, of course, the media supports them. And now means the Democrats can get whatever they want because they can create a narrative and then they can treat people like pawns and get them to basically say, if we don't get what we want, we will riot, we will loot, we will send these people out like soldiers to destroy your neighborhoods. And that is exactly what has happened. That has been the determination of this trial. The media and the Democrats now have enough power to bully, to bully and to lie to and to create propaganda and to successfully win. And that is what happened. And they are celebrating that win today. This was not a fair trial. Only one side. No person can say this was a fair trial. You just got to take three steps back and acknowledge that only one side behaves this way. I mean, yeah. a, a jury in 1995 concluded that O.J. Simpson, despite DNA evidence, hadn't murdered two people and there were no riots. But more to the point, there are a lot of people sitting behind Trump voters sitting behind bars right now have been for months charged effectively with trespassing. We're not speculating. We've seen the charges. No Republican in the Congress stands up for them. Nobody mentions that nobody, you know, is for prison reform when it's their political enemies. That's not equal justice, but nobody says it. Why is that? because we have two pandemics going on right now. There's a pandemic of ignorance in this country, and that is only allowed to fly because we also have a pandemic of cowardice in this country, okay? So we have people that are, are purposefully putting out a bunch of ignorant ignorant claims, and then we have people that are too cowardly to stand up and say, you know what, this is wrong. There has been so much that has been going on in this country that is wrong. You talk about it, I talk about it, but we do not have people that are sitting in Congress that are willing to take this fight where it needs to be taken. By the way, you bring up Maxine Waters inciting violence. I'm so old, Tucker. I remember when a man said, march peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol, and that was considered an insight to violence, right? That was like, oh my God, stop the press, get this person disappeared from social media because he is calling for violence. Look at what Maxine Waters says. No one, no one in the media is condemning these and uh, condemning these remarks. That same media that condemned condemned Trump and his supporters for weeks on end is now defending Maxine Waters. And we both know this is not the first time that Maxine Waters has incited violence. Don't forget, rush down. If you see a Trump supporter, you got to rush him down in the restaurants. They're allowed to do this. They play by a different set of rules, but it's because we allow them to play with that different set of rules. <sighs> I don't know where to begin, but um, let's take it from the top. First of all, I think it's very obvious that they didn't watch the trial because if you actually tuned into the trial, I think that the prosecution very persuasively argued that it was obvious that George Floyd died because there was a knee on his neck for almost nine minutes. Not that we even needed that argument because we all saw the video, but these idiots want you to not believe your lying eyes. I know that you saw a man kneeling on a human being's neck for almost nine minutes. I get that, I know what it looks like, but actually George Floyd's death was George Floyd's fault because according to us, well, he was a bad person and maybe it was a fentanyl overdose, which is weird because if you're gonna overdose on fentanyl, it's really convenient for Derek Chauvin that it happened within that window when the knee was on George Floyd's neck. So uh, of course that's idiotic, nobody believes this. But these fools, don't think that there should be any penalty for police officers 
who murder black Americans. They think that they should be able to get away with it with impunity. Now, Candace Owens, what she tried to do was flip it. Rather than feeling sympathy for George Floyd, she wanted you to think, you know what? This is the man who should actually be on trial. He didn't die because there was a foot on his neck. He died because it was his own fault. And you know what? The media assisted with this false narrative. They tried to make it seem as if he was this good guy who was getting his life back on track. But really, he was a bad person. Except this is what mental gymnastics looks like. This is where you disregard any conservative who claims to be a small government conservative but says this kind of thing. This is a bootlicker argument here. I don't give a flying fuck if George Floyd was the worst person on the face of the planet. Do you honestly believe that one police officer can unilaterally be the judge, jury, and the executioner on individuals that they deem bad in society? Do you not believe in due process? I mean, you're the uh, rule of law folks, aren't you? So you honestly think that a just society would allow folks to just kill people who they deem bad? See, it's obvious what she's doing. She's flipping it. So we're not thinking about what Derek Chauvin did. We're thinking about how bad George Floyd was. Now, moving on, Candace Owens then brought up the false equivalences, and she outright lied about Maxine Waters' stance, and she claimed that, you know, the left, they're not angry that Maxine Waters incites violence basically on the regular. I mean, she said we should harass Trump supporters. Now, if you actually go back and look at specifically what Maxine Waters said and take a look at the context around the conversation that she was having. So when Donald Trump instituted his zero tolerance anti-immigration policy where families were separated, uh, there were DSA activists that showed up and they disrupted the meals that uh, Trump administration officials were having, individuals like Kirsten uh, Nielsen. And there was this conversation at the time about whether or not it's justifiable for activists to disrupt the private lives of politicians who are doing terrible things. And Maxine Waters, being a politician herself, knowing that this could easily be turned on her, said, yes, you should. You should absolutely confront Trump administration officials who are doing crimes against humanity. Now, I have no idea if Maxine Waters would be as consistent against Joe Biden. I'd imagine no. But to say that she said that you should harass Trump supporters, that's not a misrepresentation. That's an outright lie. That is an outright lie. That's not what she said, and Candace Owens knows this. But Fox News audience isn't going to take the, the time to do a really quick five-minute Google search and see what she actually said. Uh, now, But she claims Trump, he's innocent. You see, uh, Trump, he told his supporters, quote, to march peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol, and that was considered an incitement of violence. So I think that that's a little bit of an oversimplification, to say the least, about what Donald Trump said. But she claims that um, that isn't necessarily an incitement of violence or an insurrection, but what Maxine Waters said recently about the Black Lives Matter protesters and the result of the, of the uh, Derek Chauvin conviction, that is definitely tantamount to uh, an incitement of violence. Okay, let's look at what Maxine Waters said. We're looking for a guilty verdict, and we're looking to see if all of the talk that took place and has been taking place after they saw what happened to George Floyd, if nothing does not happen, then we know that we got to not only stay in the street, but we have got to fight for justice, she added. Asked what protesters should do if there is no guilty verdict, Waters said protests should continue. We've got to stay on the street and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they know that we mean business, she said. In an interview with the Grio that was published on Monday morning, Waters said she was nonviolent and said her remark about being confrontational was in regard to changing the justice system in the United States. I talk about confronting the justice system, confronting the policing that's going on. I'm talking about speaking up, she said. I'm talking about legislation. I'm talking about elected officials doing what needs to be done to control their budgets and pass legislation. Waters told CNN on Monday evening that her reference to confrontation was meant in the context of the civil rights movement's nonviolent history, saying that the whole civil rights movement is confrontation. So now you have the full context as to what Maxine Waters said. Now, let's try to interpret what she said in the uh, least charitable way imaginable, right? So when she says we have to stay in the streets, we have to get more confrontational, one might think, is she, is she asking supporters who are in the streets to confront police officers get up in their faces because that would actually seem really bizarre for someone 
in her power or in her position with her stature and power to say because she knows what will happen. If protesters get in the faces of police officers who brutalize them regularly, they're going to be injured, possibly killed by police officers. So even if we interpret what she said in the least charitable way imaginable, it seem, seems really unlikely that that's what she said. Still, even if you think that what Maxine Waters said is tantamount to an incitement of violence, then of course, you should definitely think that what Trump did after repeatedly lying about the election being stolen, telling his supporters to march to the Capitol and be strong, you have to think that's also an incitement of violence. But Candace Owens does not believe that Trump incited violence. She said that Trump told them to march peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol. <laughs> so Donald Trump's words definitely didn't incite a riot. Definitely peaceful. Maxine Waters, however, definitely is incitement. Uh, definitely not peaceful. She's calling for violence. But yet Candace Owens says it's the leftists who are the hypocrites. Look in the fucking mirror, Candace. Getting back to this entire conversation regarding Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens, um, I don't think that anyone is surprised by their reactions. In fact, what they uh, what they say here is actually pretty predictable. It's right in line with what we saw from other conservatives. But you can just there's this underlying um, sense of dread in their faces. I think that because it's so frequent, because cops get off on killing uh, unarmed black Americans so frequently that they weren't necessarily expecting there to actually be justice in this case. They thought that Derek Chauvin would get away, but because this case is an anomaly and because Derek Chauvin was convicted, they can't take it. They melt down like tiny little snowflakes. <laughs> Oh, man.